Hello, my dear kids. Very good evening. This is Sundar Ravindranathan here. Hey, guys. How is everybody doing? Awesome. Right. Lovely. So, first of all, before we start, a very, very happy Independence Day to all of you. See, guys, this independence, the freedom that we are enjoying, all right, especially as a, a social science teacher, I think I have uh, a huge, huge responsibility to, to explain to you uh, the, the, the sacrifices that people have done, all right, uh, for the freedom that we are currently enjoying. Okay, so historians, so many freedom fighters, uh, they have given their lives for this. All right, we know, right? That is the reason we, we uh, 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 when we hoist a national flag, we put flowers inside. Yeah, it is uh, a sign of the sacrifices that the women did for all the husbands who lost their lives, the freedom fighters, they lost their lives, right? So there are reasons, guys. Independence Day is kind of an emotional day and where we need to realize the, the, the joy of freedom that we are enjoying now hasn't come very, very easily. Okay, so guys, yes, uh, yeah. So once again, a happy, happy Independence Day to all of you. And yes, now welcome to the Pariksha session. Uh, today we'll be dealing with the guaranteed three marker questions. We'll deal with a few questions uh, and then, all right, uh, I'll explain you, okay, the, the entire flow. Okay, let us move on. Hey guys, in case you're wondering what is Vedantu Young Wonders for you, we are a channel for we are a channel for six, seven, and eighth grade students. And what do we do? Typically, we conduct academic sessions covering four subjects, math, science, social, and English grammar. Okay, you know, and what is the best part? The best part is we also cover non-academically. There are a few series going on. One is called How Does It Work series. Typically, that series is all about uh, 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 the different components, you know, the equipments that you see around you starting from a mobile charger, a, a table fan, a, a pressure cooker, a refrigerator, an air conditioner, all right, a mosquito repellent, a lot of them, okay? How do they work? We focus on these kind of things because that knowledge is super essential for all of you. Yes, so that is one series. We also have a spoken English series. We also have a spell bee contest, a lot of stuff happening. Yes, kids? Okay, so that's what Vedantu uh, Young Wonders is all about. Quite a fascinating channel, guys. I'm sure you're going to love it. Don't take much time, you know. Quickly subscribe to the channel. And yes, enable all the notifications when you subscribe now. So that we are able to send you daily updates on what are the different live sessions that are happening. Okay. All right, let's move on. Okay, guys, one beautiful piece of information on this Independence Day. Vedantu Pro has the best subscription week, you know, uh, we call it as Vedantu Pro. It is Vedantu's best subscription. And today it is coming to you at 50% off. Guys, 50% off, I repeat. Generally, we give it come somewhere like 25, 30% off. Today it's a 50% off. So guys, note down these two links on your screen. bdnt.in slash ytpro. And also note down the teacher code SRPRO. And let me, uh, you might be thinking, what is so special about the subscription? See, as a student, you know, what is the difference between a kind of a, a struggling learner and a topper? A topper has the ability to understand things quickly and get his, gets his doubts clarified on time. Okay. So the same, this subscription is all about unlimited doubt solving for all of you. Unlimited access to live sessions of India's best teachers, Vedantu's master teachers. And along with that, you will get recordings of those master teachers for your reference. You will get beautifully crafted notes for your reference and you will also get very, very regular periodical tests and assignments. So keep monitoring your progress. So guys, overall, a very, very well-structured course. Go for it in case, you know, you're feeling that, yeah, I want to become a teacher. So note down this link and note down the teacher code to avail the discount, SRPRO, okay? Awesome kids. So all you have to do is once you go to that link, it's pdnt.in slash ytpro your grade click on get subscription look at the features of the course click on get subscription choose how many months you would want to now you see 2699 right you will get more discount okay so however you have to enter my coupon code srpro there in the given area and then click on buy now 
you get access to the best teachers and all what they teach will be in sync with your curriculum clear guys all right this is freedom sale for all of you okay now coming back to the pariksha pariksha series today we are continuing with the fao portion two chapters in history one in geography and one political science so what are the chapters in history how when and where one and from ter to territory the company establishes power it's about east india company how they started dominating they came as a, a small trader over they ruled enslaved the entire country for hundreds of years right so this is one more and then on paul on geography we have resources and on pauls you have the indian constitution clear okay let us move on so guys i'm going to the way it happens you all know it in case you are new let me repeat it first i'll show you the question and i want you guys to answer and then i obviously will take you through the answer clear ready give me a yo guys come on let me see how many of you guys are <clears throat> clear okay the first question all right this question is all about surveys now guys what does survey do what is the use of surveys can you think of different surveys happening in the world and we, with that survey results different corporate jump in for that information they pounce on that information and they try and use it in different different ways they utilize that information right say for example a toy company wants information on how many young kids are there in every school that's a survey right now the question also is here is what can a historian derive from such surveys so first tell me what are the different types of surveys that are there few of them come on once you are done with that then let us go to different types of surveys i mean now uh, you know <clears throat> what they do with the different types of surveys the historians Come on guys come on come on come on Okay here we go i will take you through so guys in today's world both government and private companies are conducting surveys right we know government conduct census different geological surveys zoological surveys and stuff private companies do conduct surveys for different reasons so surveys on demographic changes what is a per capita income survey right what is the you know uh, the position how many of them own or how many people in india own land a survey when it comes to zoo all right what is how many tigers are there in india a survey what kind of plant species are there in india how intact is the vegetation in india everything is done through a survey guys okay so guys uh, now historians what they understand is when through these kind of surveys all right they understand say for example when we speak about per capita income what is the lifestyle has india improved in its economy or not historians start looking at that is the social political economic condition of the people what is what is the status currently yes so these are things that historians try and analyze with the results of these surveys so the survey information is always critical so now you guys know so guys it's a three marker question that means you have to write somewhere with kind of four to five points at least yes awesome moving on to question number 2 all right battle of buxar So what were the consequences? Remember Mir Jafar? We'll not forget him, right? Uh, what were the consequences of Battle of Buxar? Yeah. So, you know, this guy Mir Jafar, he there was a consp he conspired. So he did not fight against the British. So Mir Qasim was defeated in the Battle of Buxar, and Mir Jafar was put there by the British because he was loyal. and he was asked to pay 5 lakh rupees every month to the to the company 
all right and uh, this guy also you know he didn't do a great job he he died and the company got the diwani rights from the emperor the mogal emperor and that is where all the trouble started because they started misusing the entire power they got they started building forts they got started collecting revenues from zamindars and all the landlords yes and they also established offices at different places they started strengthening their uh, what is circle so that's how powerful the battle of buxar was because as a result of that only it led to the company starting uh, to get the diwani rights okay so remember that all of you that's the significance of battle of buxar awesome now moving on to question number 3 okay now moving on to geography potential and actual resources what are potential resources what are actual resources guys come on i want you to answer all right by the way though this is a recorded session why should i ask you guys to do this because when i look at the chats later wherever there are queries and questions i will sit and answer them are you clear so it's very important that i i want you guys to answer this what is a potential resource and what is an actual resource come on i'm going to give you guys 30 seconds for this quick 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 so my dear kids potential and actual resources yes potential resources are those we know this is a resource we know where and we don't have any idea of how much it is available what is the future usage the implications of it but actual resources we know this is a resource this is how we are going to use it this much is available are you clear so number 1 those resources the quantity is not known actual resources the quantity is very clearly known potential resources we don't know the exact usage because to use them we might or might not have the relevant process or the technology in place actual resources we know we have already built the technology and we know how to use them i think i explained it already an example of a potential resource uranium in ladakh an actual resource similar we already use black soil right in the in maharashtra even in gujarat yes so the now you know what is a potential resource what is an actual resource i repeat potential resource is something which we know it exists we don't know what is the usage we know we can be used but for what we don't know and uh, then we do not know what is the actual how much is available that's potential actual is actually we know what it is right okay so we know how much is available how to use it so clear guys i hope you guys are clear with this question moving on to the next one here we go for question number 4 now moving on to polls why do you think democratic country needs a constitution how is it a democratic country why do we need a constitution come on think can answer if you look at what is a constitution you will be able to answer why is it required come on guys quick 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 why does a democratic country need a constitution okay let me answer this okay number one see democracy is all about people so that means there needs to be a well structured documented way of safeguarding the rights and all right of all the people right start all the fundamental rights to be more precise all right and that is exactly what constitution does so we elect our representatives right and if there is no safeguarding a uh, provision they will start misusing so that is where constitution comes to safeguard people number one number two constitution ensures there is a dominant society especially in a country like india you have minorities and majorities yes 
more people from one uh, one sect, community, religion, etc., and less people on the other side. So one should not dominate the other, and there should be a well, very strong, uh, what do you say, provision in place to safeguard the minorities. That is also what a constitution does. Now, third, the fundamental rights. This is the most important, of course, which I just told you guys. So, fundamental rights of the citizen should be ensured so that the society economically and politically is well stable, very stable. So, now you know why a democratic country needs a constitution. Right? Amazing, guys. Great. Okay, moving on. Everyone clear? Give me a yo, guys. Come on. Question number five, again, on the constitution. Can you write down the steps which were taken when it comes to framing the constitution? Very important one. What did they take into account? Number one. So the INC, we call it as Indian National Congress. They said a constituent assembly, all right, is required. It happened in 1934. Okay. The, so they resorted the same, did not go ahead because of the, the time of the Second World War. However, it was formed in 1946, the Constituent Assembly. So from 1946 to 49, they sat and drafted the Constitution. We know the father of the Constitution, the Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, played a vital, vital role here. So now the Constituent Assembly, all right, it was drafted, completed, and then adopted, and then put into effect in 1950, 26 January. Yes? So now you guys know what all happened. So it started in 1934 where they demanded, INC demanded for a constitution, the Assembly. However, Second World War, that was a time. So they resorted to it, they didn't go with it. In 1946, it started, okay? And by 1949, they completed it. 26th November 1949, they adopted it. And 26th Jan 1950, they put constitution into effect. Until now, the constitution is the only thing which is safeguarding this entire country so beautifully and exhaustively written. Yes? Awesome, guys. Hey, kids. Did you like the session today? Yeah, I hope you do. You did, right? It was a crisp session. However, questions were super important today. Right, guys, hit the like button. Let me know that you really liked it. And yes, guys, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, one request, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel so that we know that we are doing the, the good job. Okay. Thank you so much, guys. Until I meet you in the next session, this is myself, Sundar Ravindranathan, signing off. All right. Bye-bye, stay safe, stay indoors, okay? And listen to your parents, guys. I will meet you again. Bye-bye. Have a nice evening.